Okay, what you're going to have to do right now is you're going to have to get a piece of white printer paper and you're going to have to fold it in half like this. What you're going to do is you're going to have to write your name in big bold letters and make sure that it's flat on the bottom so you can see, or so it stands flat on uh, the table. So this is how it should look right now. See how I'm making sure it's flat on the bottom? Oh, my. See, I accidentally screwed up there, but what you do is you just go keep going, and make sure that you make it flat on the bottom. It doesn't really matter about the top because you're not going to be standing it up that way. And that's how it should look after you're done. Nice and you want to get. You don't have to write your name. You could do any word, number, house number, even symbols if you feel confident enough. So you want to leave about a quarter of an inch on the left and right side and at least a quarter of an inch or more on the top. And line the bottom up with the bottom of the board so it's nice and flat and level here. Okay, first you're going to have to ask Mr. Gilly for a piece of wood. Mr. Gilly, can we have a piece of wood? Okay, sure, Peter. Here you go. All right. Thanks, Mr. Gilly. Saw off just the piece of wood that you need and give the excess back. Now that you're finished cutting the board, give it back to Mr. Gilly. Mr. Gilly? All right, Peter. Thanks. Yeah. All right. I'll put, put this away. All right. You can check out some tape. Hello, checkout managers. I'd like to get some tape. It's not in that one. <laughs> Fine! Thank you. I need a movie. Uh, so now you have your ta tape. We're ready to tape down your name to, to the board. Now, very carefully trace your template onto your wood using a pencil. Only use a pencil, never ink. Be sure to save your paper template just in case you need to start over. Okay, now I'm going to approve the wood. Does this look good, Mr. Gilly? Notice how the drawing of his name is perfectly flat aligned with the bottom of the wood. Also notice how thick and fat the letters are. This is important for strength. Your nameplate could crack if the letters are too thin or skinny. Keep them fat. Okay, Peter. All right. Thanks, Mr. Gilly. Now you can go ahead and carve the outside shape. Carve out the letters, just, just the outline of them. Do the straight lines first. Notice how he's keeping his hands to the side of the blade and not in front of it. Carve the straight lines. And then to do the curved lines and irregular shapes, you're going to have to do relief cuts first. So do a short cut in and out like that. Do another shortcut in and out every three or four inches. Yeah.
so, right? Oh, that's beautiful, Logan. Thank you. Nice work. Now we're ready to get some sandpaper from the checkout counter. Can I have a piece of any great sandpaper, please? Sure. Oh, really? Oh, Now it's the sanding process. Start off by sanding the edges with 60 or 80 grit sandpaper. Be sure to get the contours and the curves and corners. Be very, gent be very gentle with the nameplate because it could break if you handle it too roughly. Also be sure to round off the corners a little bit so they're not sharp. In order to sand the holes in the center, what you do is ball up or curl up a piece of sandpaper like this, slip it through, and just run it back and forth with both hands. You might need to put your nameplate in a vise to do this. Start with 80 grit sandpaper. That's the coarsest sandpaper we'll have, 60 or 80. The lower the number of sandpaper, the coarser it will feel. You can get a black rubber sanding block like this from the tool station. And if the sandpaper is old and used up, or if you just want to put a fresh one in, what you do is pull the two ends apart, slip one end of the sandpaper inside, the little and pinch spikes it down. will hold the paper little in place. Inside. So pinch it down firmly, then wrap the other end of the paper around the sanding block, and pinch it into the slot on the other side. Okay, now that you've got your 220 grip tape on it right now, now you're gonna start going across. Make sure you go with the grain of the wood though. So it turns out nice. Like none of this, or none going backwards, just keep going st straight forward with the grip tape. Or I mean, with the wood. Okay. You now it should feel after you've sanded it, it should feel as smooth as glass on top. Okay, now you have to make sure that the sanding was uh, good. Mr. Gilly, is this good? Let's see, Peter. Ooh, smooth as glass. Very nice. All right, thanks, Mr. Gilly. You ready? Now it's time for wood burning. You might notice that you have some lines on your nameplate that you cannot carve out and you can't drill out. What do we do? We're going to wood burn those with a wood burner like this one. Ask your instructor for one. First you need to plug it in. Then you need to wait a while until it gets hot. As the wood burner heats up, make sure that the metal tip does not come into contact with anything flammable and make sure it doesn't touch the insulation on the power cord either. When you plug it in, you must stand beside it and keep an eye on it until it's cooled down. Okay, now that it's hot, what you're gonna have to do is start wood burning. I'm just uh, gonna go along the areas that I marked and it'll turn out darker. This, this can be a very slow process, so take your time and just be patient. And what you have to do is make sure all of the burn marks are even. So I'm going to go over this again.